Okay. So good morning. And um, today we we start a uh, uh, new section of the course, which is about uh, uh, router architecture. So we are going to do towards uh, uh, the most, uh, say, the, the core uh, topics in this course. This is dropped. che succede <coughs> so last um, uh, week we were over we last last lessons we overviewed uh, uh, the functions of uh, layer 3 and the more in particular IP protocol and the more in particular again how uh, packets are managed inside booters so we have uh, looked at uh, uh, IP, IP address look up into the routing table matching of the incoming packet uh, as a, the, the destination address of the incoming packet with the interfaces of the routers, uh, we look at the configuration of interfaces of the routers, and finally, on the uh, assignment of uh, IP addresses, how it works, uh, how uh, uh, the IP addresses are uh, managed in terms of uh, IP networks and uh, their size, the meaning of prefix, and the longest prefix matching algorithm. So now we are going to, uh, to see how all these functions are implemented inside of the routers and uh, what is the logical architecture uh, that is inside these machines and also uh, what is the physical implementation, at least in terms of uh, uh, blocks, not, not in the, to the details of the electronics uh, and circuits, but logical blocks. Let's start with a, very, a simple model of the router, which is uh, only functional model, uh, which, is, which can be useful to uh, make an easy evaluation of the uh, performance of these machines. And so to build this model, we have to remember <coughs> the functions that are implemented inside the, the routers. So let's take uh, the uh, slide that I have already presented in uh, previously and uh, <coughs> the shaded blue area is uh, um, the, uh, the list of, in the shaded blue area you find the list of functions that uh, have to be implemented and in particular <coughs> uh, we will have the implementation of the physical layers and the data link layer on all the interfaces of the routers so the router has many interfaces each interface, network interface is connected to a, a, a physical uh, transmission system and to a layer 2 <coughs> network, uh, not a network, so on that interface you have to implement the physical layer and the link layer functions, the data link layer functions. And this is repeated for each interface, for all the interfaces. Uh, then you have the part that is uh, implementing functions at layer 3. Okay. And here, as we have already mentioned, we have uh, uh, the protocol that is used on the data plane, which is the IP protocol. And so uh, in, the, uh, in, in the router, you must implement the basic functions that allows the packets, IP packets, to be handled in terms of uh, forwarding and routing. And then you have uh, the other parts control plane and uh, uh, management plane uh, and in control plane and management plane you find the implementation of other protocols like the control plane uh, uh, RIFO SPF BGP the routing protocols uh, 
used to write inside the routing table and uh, management plane ICMP uh, for error reporting uh, signaling plus uh, router uh, configuration. This, uh, this is the set of functions that uh, we have to implement. <coughs> this minimal functional model is very useful especially to uh, compute uh, the delay, so the times that uh, the time that it takes uh, for um, the packet that gets into the router to get outside, so to be forwarded to the uh, output uh, uh, interface. And uh, this delay is uh, uh, an important uh, uh, factor uh, in order to evaluate the performance of the routers. And uh, so, looking at the scheme, we have uh, first uh, on the uh, uh, boundaries or, 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 or at the edges of this uh, rectangle, the implementation of uh, layer two functions. So you have uh, the layer two functions that are implemented on uh, incoming packets and uh, <coughs> uh, layer two functions implemented on outgoing packets. We will look more closely at them. Uh, basically, they, uh, they are used to um, manage frames frame is the protocol data unit of layer 2 uh, the frame must be delineated uh, you have to check for some fields inside the frame in order for example to, make, uh, to perform an error, error check uh, and then on the, at the output uh, frames must be generated so reassembled encapsulating outgoing packets and then you have the transmission which also takes time the transmission of uh, the the frame out of the output interface once the frame is ready to be transmitted. <coughs> then we have uh, uh, network layer functions. Uh, by the way, I forgot to uh, make you notice that in this representation you have inputs on the left and output on the right. So this is very similar to what we have seen in the section dedicated to, uh, to uh, switching matrices and switching uh, systems. Uh, this is a very uh, useful representation where, when you want to, um, to, to consider uh, a device like that in, from the theoretical point of view. As we will see, it is not exactly the, the, the physical, or it's not exactly the same when you are talking about the physical implementation. Okay? but uh, we will see it later on. So, data link layer functions, then you have uh, layer functions, and uh, the uh, uh, IP layer functions, or network layer functions. And um, in this uh, scheme, uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, uh, devices or uh, logical objects uh, involved in the uh, network layer functions. First of all, there is uh, an input queue uh, that is, uh, uh, in this case, a single queue, just to simplify the model, is where all the packets uh, that are uh, extracted from uh, frames are queued, waiting to be processed inside the node. <coughs> and uh, so here you have uh, a first uh, uh, queue, and then uh, this uh, central node um, is the one that represents the functions of uh, packet uh, handling. So you have uh, packet processing, the extraction of uh, IP address out of the packet header, the destination address, and then the basic function involved in the routing decision. So as we have already mentioned several times, <coughs> the lookup into the routing table with the destination address in order to read in the routing table what is the outgoing uh, link that should be used for that specific packet. <coughs> Once the outgoing link, link is found, then we have the forwarding phase. So the packets must be physically uh, transmitted or transferred from uh, the central part of the uh, router to the appropriate the outgoing uh, uh, part, and in the outgoing part, 
we have another place where packets can be stored in the in buffers. So we have another buffering point, another buffering center. <clears throat> and these buffers are more um, are there for contention resolution. And finally, we have the transmission. So the packets uh, that are in this buffer uh, at the output are waiting to be transmitted out of the uh, output interface, the physical interface. <clears throat> then you have also uh, other uh, components that are used for uh, the management of the other protocols on the control plane, on the management plane, but they are not uh, included in this uh, uh, minimal functional model, uh, just to simplify the analysis. <clears throat> So now let's uh, have a look at some of the aspects that are involved in this uh, uh, architecture. So first of all, uh, output port contention resolution. Uh, the situation is, uh, uh, of, of contention um, is the following. You have uh, three packets that are coming at the same time into the uh, router, so uh, from uh, three different outputs. And uh, uh, it can happen that... Uh, uh, two or more of them have to be, after making a, the, the, the uh, routing phase, so after deciding what is the outgoing, going, outgoing queue, two or more of them uh, have to be um, sent to the same outlet. So in this case, you need the buffer at the output because there is a contention. Uh, the outlets are always uh, serial or we have to assume that they are serial, so they are not able to send the two packets at the same time. So when two packets have to be uh, sent to the same buff, to the same output, one is transmitted while the other one is stored in the buffer. Okay. This is a situation that is uh, different from what we have seen in uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, strictly non-blocking or rearrangeable non-blocking networks. Because as uh, we have already pointed out, on that case, when we were talking about uh, uh, switching fabrics, blockings were internal. So the non-blocking network is a network without any, inter any internal block uh, condition. It means that internally there is no contention of any link or switch uh, in the, uh, the architecture by two connections at the same time. In this case, the contention regards the output port. Okay, so it's not internal, it's on the, uh, on the edge. And so even if you have, uh, you, you use a, uh, a strictly non-blocking or eligible non-blocking network to implement a router, this will not help in solving output for contentions. Okay? You need a buffering system. In the um, simplified model that we have uh, seen before, the buffers for output port contention, contention are located at the output, so close to the uh, outlet or the output interface. And uh, <clears throat> actually, this is just uh, one of the possible buffer configuration configurations, uh, and um, uh, it is. Uh, depicted also in uh, this uh, slide. <coughs> um, so when you have uh, the uh, buffers at the output, uh, you are able to manage the contentions. Like, for example, here, you have three packets. All three packets uh, have to be sent to the first outlet on the top. And uh, so using buffers, one of these uh, is uh, transmitted. The other two are stored in the buffer. In fact, you see that in the next uh, uh, at the time, you have another buffer that is coming that uh, uh, output port and uh, it will be inserted in the buffer waiting for the other ones uh, to be transmitted. Uh, this is a, a very um, simple implementation, but uh, there is an underlying concept uh, <coughs> which we have to understand when uh, we are talking about output port uh, queuing. It is the so-called speed-up factor. So if we want that the packets uh, that are uh, making the contention, OK, 
can be uh, stored in the uh, output buffer, we need a system that allows uh, more than one pa multiple packets at the same time to be stored in a buffer. Okay. This is not uh, uh, so obvious because uh, uh, it means that the buffer <coughs> must be written uh, in a, a parallel three times. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you, you don't know how to manage uh, this uh, uh, contention. Uh, not only the buffer has to be uh, accessible by more packets at the same time, but also the intermediate the switching fabric must be able to su support three packets that are transferred to the same output at the same time. Okay. <coughs> so this is called the uh, speed up factor. So the speed up factor in this case must be at least uh, three. Uh, in the general case, if you want to be guaranteed uh, by any possible contention, you must have a speed up factor equal to n because uh, it is possible that all the packets that are coming on the same, uh, at the same time to all the input ports of the, of the, uh, of the router has to be sent to the same uh, output port. So that's the worst case. And in this case, you need a speed up, speed up factor equal to n. Okay. Um, how can you obtain this uh, speed up factor? There are different techniques. You can uh, really uh, build a parallel uh, electronic uh, architecture, so the system can be physically parallelized, uh, or you can uh, make a, uh, you can play <coughs> with time. So, for example, you can oversample <coughs> the data that are coming to the uh, switching uh, to the switching fabric. Uh, so that uh, in, in uh, one uh, packet time, uh, the, where the time is given by the uh, rate of the input lines and the output lines, <coughs> actually the switching uh, fabric is uh, uh, working uh, n time faster. Okay, so let's say that you have. Uh, <coughs> same situation that is depicted in the slide. Assume that uh, the packet time has this duration. Okay. Uh, before entering into the switching fabric, uh, packets are oversampled, so basically uh, the time of the packet uh, is compressed. <coughs> to a smaller time. And then, uh, in, that, in, in this way, uh, you can send uh, the output port, uh, the, the packets that will arrive in, a, uh, <coughs> in the same, uh, all, all three packets will arrive in uh, one uh, uh, packet time, and uh, here two of them are sent to the buffer, and the other one is transmitted, so it will be compressed back to the rate that is the rate of the uh, input and output lines, and then transmitted at the output line. Okay. So if you have uh, a, an input rate that is equal to C, you can assume equal also to the output uh, rate, that is the bit rate of the input lines and the <coughs> bit rate of the output lines. Here inside, everything should work at the, uh, the clock time. If you want to work with, uh, to solve all the possible contentions, that is a uh, uh, C, uh, sorry, that is a C by N. <coughs> n times faster. This is a way to implement uh, the speed up factor. This is also why it is called the speed up factor. Okay. <coughs> As I said, uh, output uh, queuing is only one of the possible uh, queuing architectures. 
Um, there is another solution uh, which is uh, uh, very much uh, used, which is input for queuing. So instead of having the buffers located close to the output ports, there are buffers located close to the input ports. Okay. So in this case, when uh, you have uh, <coughs> an input port uh, <coughs> architecture, uh, you don't need any speed up in the uh, in the switching matrix, and also uh, any speed up in uh, the writing uh, uh, time of the uh, buffers <coughs> inside and the output port. Because buffers that cannot uh, uh, packets that cannot enter uh, or uh, cannot be forwarded in that specific uh, packet time remains stored at the input. Okay. So in this case, you are simplifying uh, the hardware and decreasing the cost. You don't need a speed up factor anymore. However, there is some. Uh, <coughs> there is always. Uh, uh, the drawback uh, and uh, <coughs> when you are saving uh, as usual performance is, uh, performance is going down and in this case <coughs> the degradation is given by the so called the head of the line blocking uh, phenomenon so <coughs> what is the head of the line blocking um, is uh, exactly the same that happens uh, when you have an office with several tellers and uh, you have separated queues. Okay. This is why uh, today, most of the time, when you are going to the supermarket and you have to buy uh, ham, you have to take the ticket because uh, instead of having separated queues, you have a single queue which is, uh, does not suffer from the head of the line blocking phenomenon. The head of the line blocking happens uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, in this example. Uh, in this way. So you have uh, here uh, three packets that are coming to the, uh, to, the, to the router in a certain time slot. One is uh, red, one, the other one is blue, the other one is uh, red again. The color indicates uh, the, out, uh, the output uh, um, uh, interface where these packets have to be sent. So red means that they have to be routed on the uh, first interface uh, on the top, on the right, uh, green, the second, and blue, the third. Okay. So here uh, we have a uh, uh, first arrival of two uh, red and one blue, and then uh, after this uh, we have another red and, uh, and the green packet. The blue can be sent uh, to the output interface immediately, so there is uh, no contention. Instead, uh, the two uh, red packets uh, um, creates a situation of output port contention. So one of the two has to be stored, uh, can be forwarded and uh, sent uh, the output. The other one has to remain stored in the input queue, but is the input queue of the interface where the packet came in. Okay. So assume that uh, the top, the, the one that is coming from uh, the interface on the top uh, uh, is uh, uh, transmitted, and the other one that is that came on the interface of the bottom uh, has to be stored, so lose, uh, it loses the contention. What happens to the green packet that is behind? Okay. The green packet uh, cannot be transmitted immediately, because here there is a red packet that is uh, waiting and cannot be forwarded. Uh, then on the, on the next time slot, maybe the top one uh, again wins the contention, so the green, the green packet remains there waiting. Okay. But um, in, in uh, reality, the interface <coughs> of the green packet, so the second interface of the output, is idle. So in principle, the green packet could be transmitted because it uh, does not experience any contention. Okay. The green packet is not experiencing a contention itself. It is uh, suffering from the contention of the, uh, the packet that is uh, just uh, in front of him. So this is head of the line blocking, and uh, uh, the problem is that um, it creates uh, a degradation on the uh, occupation of the output uh, ports, because 
this output port of the uh, green packet uh, that in principle is free remains uh, idle for a, a time slot one or more according to uh, how many uh, time slots the, the green packet has to be there waiting okay so in the previous case you spend more, but uh, you have, uh, you can reach 100% uh, occupation of the output ports. So it means that uh, if uh, you have uh, packets that are always uh, arriving to the switch, uh, so at any time, so you have 100% occupation of the input ports, all this traffic <laughs> will be <coughs> always uh, um, sent to the output, so the output ports will be always busy. All the time, in in average, let's say. So this is a 100% uh, uh, throughput. It's called 100% throughput. In this case, you cannot reach 100% throughput. Okay. So we will see if we have time at the end of the course that there are ways to uh, improve this uh, performance, still uh, maintaining uh, <coughs> the fuse at the input. <clears throat> and so in some cases, you can re reach 100% throughput, but not in the general case. So this is a, um, just to, uh, an introduction to what happens uh, uh, to in, in the packet switching world and why we have to maintain buffers and also different architectures for uh, the buffers. <clears throat> Uh, with the simple model that I have presented, the minimal model, we can uh, uh, make a very simple uh, performance evaluation. Uh, here I put the reading uh, because uh, it's uh, something uh, that we can uh, uh, probably, I will not ask in, in the oral exam, but uh, still I would like to, to go through this part because uh, it, uh, it's uh, interesting. So we take the, our model that we have already seen. And uh, first of all, we can make some uh, uh, assumptions in order to simplify uh, analysis or further assumptions to, of uh, simplification. For example, we can assume that uh, layer two processing uh, delay is uh, negligible. Okay? So we don't have any delay that is due to the processing at the input and uh, at the output of uh, the at the input of this uh, model, actually, and uh, uh, at the output, we will have a delay that is uh, given by the transmission uh, out of the output interface, but not a further delay for frame processing. For example, uh, we neg uh, neglect the delay uh, that is uh, due to adding uh, layer two uh, header to the frames. So what are, if we make this uh, assumption, what are the uh, components of the transfer delay? The transfer delay, uh, so I repeat, is the time that uh, uh, a packet takes to uh, go across uh, this, uh, this equipment, to go across the router. So we have the waiting time into the input buffer, because there is a buffer, so there is a waiting time. Then we have the, the processing time for functions uh, at uh, layer 3, so network layer functions, uh, IP address lookup and uh, routing decision. We have a waiting time at the output buffer for output port contention, and here we assume that uh, we have uh, output port <coughs> queuing because it's simpler to analyze. And finally, the transmission time. And the transmission time is still uh, it's, uh, it's there because uh, we have to take into account that packets have a certain number of bits so, uh, made of a finite uh, uh, quantity of information. So the total transfer delay is the sum of all these components, uh, and uh, especially the queuing components of the uh, waiting time at uh, the queues uh, are random variables. You cannot predict exactly what will be the waiting time in a certain moment for a certain packet. You can only uh, calculate uh, uh, average values because uh, this, uh, this 
the, the timing in uh, the waiting queue can be really uh, variable and uh, changeable according to the conditions of the queue. So in order to uh, characterize uh, uh, this system, we can introduce uh, some symbols. Uh, for example, M is a uh, number of input ports, and we assume that is equal to the number of output ports. Then we have the average packet arrival frequency, <coughs> lambda, uh, capital lambda. Uh, and, uh, we can measure it in uh, packets per second, but since packet is uh, a number is uh, the inverse of the seconds as a unit uh, of the measurement. And uh, we assume that uh, uh, in uh, uh, statistical terms, uh, the uh, process that generates packets arriving to uh, the, the node is a Poissonian. Okay? If you probably you know, <coughs> we, were, we are not going into the details of the mathematical uh, uh, conditions, uh, but uh, the Poissonian process is very common to many courses. Then uh, we have uh, L, which is uh, the average packet length. Okay. Here we assume that packets uh, can have a different size, and uh, so therefore uh, L is a, a random variable. And again, we assume that uh, the distribution of the length of the packets is exponential. Okay. These two uh, assumptions uh, underlie the uh, uh, possibility of making some uh, calculations in a simpler way. And finally, we have the output line speed. Uh, C is the capacity of the output, uh, each output, uh, output, output line in terms of uh, uh, bit per second. And uh, we assume that it's constant. That is the most realistic condition. So, uh, this means that uh, the average uh, uh, transmission time for the packet is uh, L divided by C. Further uh, simplification, we assume a very uh, small processing time at layer 3. So the, the IP address lookup operation and uh, routing decision is very fast. And therefore, if this uh, server is very fast, this queue will, will, will uh, be always uh, empty, so we can uh, uh, neglect uh, both the processing time here and uh, the waiting time in this first queue. Okay. So finally, all the system uh, is uh, reduced to just uh, the analysis of one of these uh, uh, output queues. And um, so uh, what is the amount of uh, traffic that each uh, output queue receives? Uh, here we assume that uh, the load <coughs> is of, uh, on, the, uh, the, on, on the router is uh, evenly distributed or fairly distributed uh, to all the outputs. So each uh, uh, output receives uh, <coughs> 1 divided by n uh, total load. Okay, so 1 hence of the total load. This is so the, the, the input uh, load on, on each queue is uh, a small uh, lambda equal to capital lambda divided by n. And then we assume that uh, the buffer here is, uh, in uh, has infinite capacity. Therefore, each of these queues can be represented by uh, MM1 model, which is uh, uh, the basic uh, system in, uh, in theory that uh, is easily Analyze, uh, analyzed with uh, the uh, Markov chain uh, uh, model. Okay. So the first parameter is uh, small lambda, uh, which, which uh, is the frequency of uh, arrivals uh, uh, to, that, uh, to the queue. And uh, the second parameter, mu, is the uh, inverse of the average uh, transmission time. So it's the average transmission rate. Um, if we also make some independent assumptions, so the arrival and service processes are independent in each node and the arrival and service processes are independent between different nodes, then we can use the, uh, uh, we can apply the MM1 model. 
So if you, we define RAW uh, as uh, uh, the normalized uh, traffic, it is uh, capital lambda divided by mu, it's given by that expression. Uh, finally, we can uh, find the waiting time in the system. The waiting time in the system, dt, that is in our case also the transfer time that we are looking for, after all the simplification assumption we made, is given by the waiting time in the queue plus the transmission time. So waiting time in the queue plus average waiting time in the queue plus average transmission time, which is given by that simple expression. Okay, that's the result of the uh, Markovian change, uh, chain uh, uh, model. And uh, <coughs> this means that uh, here you have uh, dt, so the waiting time in the system, here you have uh, uh, rho the normalized traffic. So you have a component that is a T, the, tra the average transmission time. When uh, uh, rho is equal to zero, okay, uh, that expression is exactly the transmission time. And then when rho approximate gets close to one, uh, this is zero, this is one, so it means that uh, uh, the arrival rate to uh, the, the system gets uh, close to uh, the um, average uh, transmission rate out of these interfaces, then <coughs> the waiting time tends to go to the infinite. So you have this graph, a graph like that. Okay. So when you are starting to, over, to, to overload the, uh, the node, so uh, the waiting time starts to grow, grow uh, in an exponential way, or not exponential, no, but grows asymptotically to the infinite, okay? Because when rho is equal to 1, you have uh, 1 divided by 0. This is a well-known result, and you can find uh, the theory in, uh, <clears throat> many books, and I think that in, also in the book of uh, Pattavina there, are, there is a chapter at the end uh, that, where you find the review of the theory that is underlying this result. Okay, so, but this is just to uh, offer a, an easy way to calculate performance of uh, uh, the nodes in terms of transfer delay. Note that uh, the transfer delay that goes to Infinite, infinite when uh, uh, rho is equal to 1 does not mean that the throughput is not equal to 1. Okay, you have, if you, here you have output queuing, you will have the throughput equal to 1. So everything that goes in, comes in, goes out, but it may wait to go out, uh, a specific packet may wait for going out uh, forever. It will go out uh, sooner or later, but uh, in uh, in the time that is growing <coughs> in that way, okay? Obviously, uh, the assumption of an infinite buffer is not uh, realistic, so you have uh, uh, in real systems uh, final, bu final buffers here. It means that uh, uh, when you are growing the input uh, rate, uh, close to the output rate, you will start experiencing uh, uh, packet losses, okay? because packets that find the, the, output, the, the queues uh, full are discarded. Therefore, uh, the actual uh, transfer time uh, will not grow to, uh, to infinite, but uh, you will start experiencing packet loss. Uh, of course, the analysis may, is more complicated, but it is also possible to make analysis in this situation. <coughs> so the, the transfer time uh, that you can measure uh, is a, a random variable with a, a, a fixed component that is uh, uh, related to all the fixed uh, delays that you have, for example, processing delay uh, or the, the um, delay uh, of uh, uh, layer 2 processing, so uh, 
delineating uh, frames and decapsulating packets from frames, these are usually uh, fixed, so you have the fixed component, and then you have the variable component, uh, which makes uh, the, uh, the total transfer delay a random variable. And uh, usually, uh, the total transfer delay is also uh, named the packet transfer delay, and, uh, the uh, packet delay variation, packet transfer delay variation is uh, the um, variance of this uh, of this random variable. Okay. <clears throat> How large we have to design buffers? Uh, this is a very simple rule that uh, you can uh, find, and, but it, it's uh, used uh, some, uh, many times. And uh, in order to dimension buffers, you have to take into account uh, uh, not only what happens on the single hop, so in, from in, the, in one uh, single uh, uh, router, but uh, what happens end to end, because at the end, the IP protocol has to perform uh, for, uh, in, a, in a good way for the applications, and the applications are end to end. So the, uh, there is a rule of thumb in order to dimension the uh, a, a capacity of uh, a buffer. When the buffer is uh, storing packets for a flow end to end, so you have uh, uh, here the host, and here another host, <coughs> and here you have many routers. So the round trip time. Is from from the list from the source host to the destination host and then back. Okay. And this is uh, uh, not it's not difficult to measure, especially because uh, this time is also used uh, for by the operating systems of the host to uh, <coughs> uh, to set the parameters of the connections of uh, TCP. So when you have, you know the round trip time, then you can dimension the buffers in each, uh, uh, in each router along the way with that rule. So the depth of the buffer should be equal to round trip time plus uh, multiplied by the capacity of the output link. For example, if you have 10 gigabit link um, and uh, the round trip time is 250 milliseconds, this is, means that you need a uh, uh, buffer that is able to store 2.5 uh, gigabits, that means uh, 312 uh, megabytes. Okay. Uh, there is a problem, usually these uh, uh, routers and a single queue in the router does not uh, uh, store packets of a single output uh, uh, of host uh, flow of, oh, sorry, of a single connection, uh, but it uh, stores uh, the, the packets of multiple connections. Okay. So if you have multiple flows, you can apply this uh, rule of thumb. And there also the other problem is how to measure the round trip time, because if you have multiple flows, different flows with follow different paths in the network. So in this case, uh, the round trip time is estimated by taking, for example, the worst round trip time that you can imagine in a in, in the network or in internet, which is usually close to 250 milliseconds. So let's now go back to the uh, router architecture and uh, we can uh, have a look of different options that uh, can be uh, used to, in order to, to build a, a router. Uh, first of all, the blocks that are always uh, uh, inside each kind of router that you can imagine are the ones that is uh, represented here. So you have blocks for uh, managing input port operation, blocks for managing output port operation, and then a forwarding block that is uh, uh, used to transfer packets from input port to the output port, plus 
components that are used for uh, managing the whole activity of the node. Okay. So the first important uh, uh, choice is uh, about the implementation of uh, the <coughs> forwarding path. How can we implement the forwarding path? Here there are three different uh, uh, choices possible. And um, this is the, the, the archi general architecture depends very much upon uh, what uh, we choose. And so we can use the memory, the bus, or a, a switching matrix. The memory case is uh, used uh, in, uh, it was used in the first generation routers. If you remember, where computers are specialized for uh, packet, uh, they've been customized for, for packet handling. Uh, but it is uh, still used in the so called software routers, so routers that are implemented by configuring a, a, a host or a, a, a computer, a PC, uh, which uh, uh, have, has uh, several uh, interface cards, because otherwise it's not a So it, uh, in this case, uh, um, when a packet arrives to the, one of the interface cards, it is stored in the memory, so in the RAM of the, of the PC, uh, then it is prost, uh, processed and remains there until it's not ready to send it uh, uh, to the output port. So in this case, when it is ready and the output port is free, the packet will be uh, <coughs> transmitted to the output port uh, module of the machine. Okay. So the output, the um, interface card, uh, network interface card of the corresponding to the output port. Um, this architecture is uh, limited by the speed of the system and uh, not only the clock uh, of the CPU, that is not really re very relevant, but uh, the speed of the bus, of the system bus. In this case, you have to use the system bus for every input packet twice. Once when the packet is uh, stored in memory and another time when the packet is sent to the output port. Okay. Of course, also the speed of uh, uh, memory is important. So you have to access the memory at the line rate, the rate at which the packet is arriving at the input port. <coughs> uh, so these architectures uh, um, are, were uh, very much used at the beginning of the internet. Then uh, they uh, um, became uh, um, not, not so used because uh, of the limitations of the system. Uh, today, uh, when uh, the hardware of uh, computers is, uh, has uh, incredibly improved in terms of performance, they are on fashion again. Okay? And uh, you may have uh, software routers that are even faster than uh, uh, specialized router machines sometimes. Um, and they are less expensive because basically you buy a standard machine, uh, high performance, and uh, you install software uh, to make it uh, work as a router. So the other solution is uh, based on uh, the bus. In, in this case, you have uh, uh, several uh, modules of the input ports and the output ports that uh, are connected by a, a bus. This is not uh, uh, the usual bus uh, that you have, system bus that you have in a PC but is uh, dedicated only uh, to the, the, the routing system. So you cannot implement this architecture directly in a standard PC. <coughs> um, it's simple because usually the bus is uh, very inexpensive. Uh, however, you have uh, limitations that are due to the bus contention. Basically, packets that arrive to the node remain stored in the input ports until they are not ready to go to the output ports. Um, and then when they have to be transferred to the output port, they cross the bus. So in this case, each, bat, bus, each packet engages uh, the bus once, not twice as before. Okay. But you can have limitations because uh, the bus is a shared uh, resource. So you have to uh, resolve the bus contention by uh, many packets that arise at the same time. This is the scheme that includes also 
the processing part. The most perform the, the most uh, performing solution is the uh, the architecture based on a switching fabric uh, or a switching uh, matrix. Uh, so in this case, you have a uh, uh, component at the center of the the, the router uh, interconnecting the different modules or the <coughs> interfaces or input output interfaces plus also the other modules. And uh, it, it is a switching matrix or a switching system. So, uh, by definition, it is uh, able to manage the forwarding of several packets at the same time because it has uh, many inputs and many outputs. Uh, so, you can uh, have uh, different choices. Um, and um, uh, other components are used, uh, are, are needed to manage the switching fabric, but the performance are, are much uh, better than before. So all the uh, top line uh, products, like uh, uh, top line routers, adopt uh, this uh, solution and this architecture. Uh, now there is another option. Let's uh, consider just uh, this uh, uh, architecture based on a switching fabric. There is another choice to make. Uh, how to um, manage uh, the operations at layer two, at layer three, so the operations at the IP layer. Uh, because uh, we know that at the IP layers, we have to um, extract uh, uh, the destination address of each packet and uh, uh, start uh, looking at, uh, in the routing table in order to understand where to send the packet. So this operation of IP address lookup uh, should be, can be implemented in a centralized or a distributed way. In the centralized solution, you have uh, specialized components in the uh, router uh, used for this purpose. So when a packet arrives to a specific uh, interface, it is uh, stored there, then uh, the header uh, information that the header is analyzed and you, uh, there is the extraction of the destination IP address. Uh, by this information, the destination IP address, the forwarding engine, which is responsible for the forwarding table lookup, is uh, uh, contacted, so it, the destination IP address is sent to the forwarding engine, and the forwarding engine, after the lookup in the forwarding table, or the routing table, returns the outgoing port, okay? So once the outgoing port is known, then the packet can be transferred to the appropriate output interface. In this uh, centralized uh, uh, implementation, the switching fabric is used uh, twice, uh, three times for each packet. So one, one time for... Uh, um, sending uh, the destination address to the forwarding engine, one time for sending the reply of the engine to the interface, the input interface, and uh, another time to send the packet to the output interface. Okay. So you have uh, three times uh, the switching uh, fabric is used. The other solution is the distributed uh, packet processing. In this case, each interface has all the necessary components in order to solve uh, the lookup problem. Okay, so when the packet comes in, it is stored in the uh, input interface, and then the IP address lookup is uh, done inside the interface. So the packet in, in header is analyzed, destination uh, uh, address is uh, extracted, but uh, uh, it is sent to the local forwarding engine that is uh, implemented inside the interface, and uh, so the outgoing port is immediately uh, retrieved. Okay. Uh, you can see that the central switching fabric is used only once per packet. So in this uh, distributed implementation, you have uh, less access to the switching fabric, and uh, therefore the performance can be uh, further increased. Ob obviously, you pay 
in terms of uh, complexity because you have to replicate the forwarding engine on each interface. While in the centralized case, there was only one forwarding engine. So this is uh, uh, the complete architecture uh, that uh, implements uh, the um, distributed control, so the distributed forwarding engine. Uh, in this case, uh, we use the switching fabric, but the same can be also done using the bus, for example, the bus, because uh, it's just uh, you have to change the uh, cards that are uh, um, managing interfaces, providing them with a, a processing capacity. Okay, so it, it, in principle, you can do it also in uh, the bus architectures. Okay, so this is uh, uh, basically the set of possible architectures that we may think about. Um, uh, the functions that are carried out in the input and output uh, ports, uh, so the, uh, that are managing uh, um, packets when they arrive and when they uh, go out of the router, are depicted here, so you have uh, the physical layer part, that is uh, the line termination, that performs, uh, in, this is the input part, so you have uh, to uh, read the bits from the transmission system. <coughs> then there is the central block that performs uh, the data link layer functions, for example, frame delineation, and then decapsulation of the packet from the, from the frame. And then this is the part that uh, the blocks that performs uh, the decentralized functions at layer, layer 3, so the apparent layer. Uh, so the lookup <coughs> uh, for the output port um, using the forwarding table that is copied from the central uh, table. So there will you will need to have a forwarding table uh, copied in each uh, <coughs> of these uh, uh, forwarding modules inside each of the interface uh, because otherwise, of course, uh, the, the decentralization is not uh, uh, <coughs> useful. And the goal is to perform all these uh, functions at uh, the speed of the, uh, the line rate, so the speed uh, of the bits when they arrive from the, from the line. On the output uh, side, uh, you have uh, uh, buffering, so in case you have an output port, an output uh, queuing. Again, uh, <coughs> processing uh, uh, for the data link layer functions, so encapsulation of uh, uh, packets in two frames, uh, and finally, the uh, line termination uh, that is uh, the uh, physical interface for the transmission of the frame out of the router. Okay. So these are uh, basically uh, all the logical blocks uh, that uh, we need in a router. Uh, now we for, uh, look at, uh, in particular only to the distributed uh, implementation based on the switching matrix, which is the one that gives the best performance. Uh, and uh, we start looking also at uh, the hardware architecture in terms of uh, macro blocks. Okay. So this is the uh, general picture. Uh, you have here the switching fabric and then uh, the line cards uh, plus other modules so that we will uh, uh, inspect. Uh, you can notice that uh, here you don't have uh, the separation of output ports and input ports. Uh, and this is because uh, um, the ports of the routers physically are always bidirectional. Okay, so the, uh, the port is where you connect, uh, you plug uh, uh, the, the cable or the optical fiber <coughs> that is coming from the network. And um, uh, in case of a twisted pair, so the typical uh, uh, internet cable, there is a, really a phys single physical port, which is bidirectional. 
in the case of uh, optical fibers, you may have uh, a fiber pair, so a couple of fibers that uh, arise one for each uh, direction. So the single port is uh, unidirectional, but uh, all the circuitry that uh, manages the physical layer it is uh, on a single board. Okay. So it manages uh, both transmission and uh, reception. So the line cards are uh, N if you have N ports of the routers, and each line card uh, is connected to the network by a bidirectional uh, port. And then all the line cards are connected to the switching fabric and also the other components, so the switching fabric is <coughs> the core of, of the system. So let's start looking at uh, all these uh, blocks. So first of all, you have uh, uh, a general management controller of the uh, router, uh, which, have, uh, which is uh, directly connected to the uh, switching fabric. And um, this is a processor, so with a, a CPU and a, a memory and so on, that is uh, usually programmable and uh, it runs the operating system of the router. So each router has an operating system which can be also uh, inter easily interfaced by the, either a command line interface or a graphical interface. And uh, the operating system is used for uh, the global management of the system, so administrative and management tasks, so configuration. Handling of uh, failures and alarms, handling of exceptions, packets that need extra uh, attention are sent to the uh, to this uh, component, so the management. Then there is another processor that is dedicated to the um, control plane. Okay, so the manage management controller is uh, implementing the management plane. The routing controller is implementing the control plane. So it is implementing all the necessary functions that are used to manage the routing protocols, BDP, OSPF, uh, root, etc. So uh, the communication with the other routers in order to implement the exchange routing information. And uh, the final function of this <laughs> routing controller is to man maintain and update the routing table. Okay. So the routing table is written by the routing controller that manages communication with the other uh, routers. Then let's uh, go in, inside the line card. Inside the line card you have the transponder and transceiver, the block that is uh, uh, explore, that, that is implementing the physical layer functions, so the optical to electrical, uh, electrical to optical conversion, and also the so-called uh, service, so the uh, serial to parallel or parallel to serial converters. And these are very important because uh, they, while uh, on the lines, so in tra transmission lines, uh, the information is always uh, sent in a serial way, inside the routers, uh, usually as inside the computer, data are transferred on a, a parallel bus. So you may have uh, 64 bit or 32 bit 64 bit architectures or 128 bit architectures according to uh, <coughs> what you have in this uh, line card. And uh, so these components are the ones that makes uh, the uh, transformation from the uh, external serial world to the internal parallel world. The framer is responsible for all the layer 2 operations, so synchronization. Uh, frame overhead processing, frame delineation, uh, error control, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, on the receiver side, on the transmitter side, frame factor inception and scrambling. There are there several techniques uh, to encode information before reaching the physical layer. Uh, for example, bits are scrambled in order to uh, better uh, perform in terms of uh, uh, bit error probability. Uh, they may be encoded in order to perform uh, uh, forward error uh, correction and so on and so forth. So this is the framer. 
Then there is another block that is called the traffic manager, which is always uh, uh, attached to the uh, switching fabric. Uh, this is the block that is responsible for the buffer management. So that all the uh, buffer architectures that uh, we have seen introduced and we will probably see at the end of the course <coughs> are uh, implemented inside the traffic manager. In fact, the traffic manager has always a memory that is associated which is the memory where the buffers are uh, host, uh, hosted. So there you have uh, uh, the traffic access control, the buffer management, and the uh, scheduling. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, that buffers can be placed at the output or at the input. When buffers are placed at the input, uh, you have a degradation of performance. I mentioned that there are system techniques in order to uh, increase the performance uh, in the uh, also with the input buffers. These are called virtual output queues. Uh, if we will have time, we will see uh, them. And uh, so the manage the traffic manager is also responsible to manage this uh, virtual output queuing system, which requires uh, several algorithms to schedule packets uh, <coughs> that uh, are the ones that. Yes. Uh, uh, mentioned there, for example, the round robin <coughs> uh, technique that we will investigate. Uh, and also, so to, to schedule how packets uh, have to be uh, read from uh, when you have different buffers, like in the virtual uh, output queue architecture. And also, if you want to implement other techniques uh, like uh, early packet to discard, so uh, that are techniques that are preventing congestion, and these are buffer management, the acronyms that you see there. <coughs> um, then there is a, another function, segmentation and reassembly. This may be necessary because, as we have mentioned in the general model, usually packets have different size, so typically IP packets as a variable have variable size, uh, but uh, the switching fabrics are better managed when you have uh, fixed size uh, packets. Okay. So you, if, uh, the, the, the ideal condition to have a high performance uh, switching matrices is that uh, uh, you have a time slotted uh, uh, behavior. So you have uh, all the inputs synchronized and uh, with uh, packets that are always uh, the same length. Uh, so that you can have a configuration for each time slot of the switching fabric. So in order to transform uh, variable length packets into fixed length packets, you have to do packet segmentation. And on the, at the output, then the segments are again put together before the packet is uh, transmitted back and reconstructed. <coughs> and so you have reassembly. Finally, you may implement uh, in, in this traffic manager some uh, poly, traffic policy or shaping uh, uh, techniques. Uh, if you want, for example, to control the maximum packet rate on a given flow, you can implement them with uh, the leaky uh, uh, bucket architecture, so <clears throat> something that uh, discard packets when the flow is uh, too high compared to the uh, given threshold. And uh, these are typical of uh, protocols like ATM or even IP, the diff cell. So this is the uh, traffic manager. <coughs> then we have uh, uh, in the line card the, the central processing unit, which is uh, basically the processor of the line card. This line card itself is a small computer. <coughs> and that performs the control plane functions, the connection setup, the tear down, table updates, and so on. And then the network processor, which is the other important block that we have uh, looked into. The network processor is uh, <coughs> performs uh, several functions, and uh, in particular, IP address lookup and packet classification. <clears throat> are the two functions that we will uh, explain in the rest of the course. Uh, IP address lookup is uh, for uh, uh, looking into the tables in the uh, routing tables in a, an efficient way. 
packet classification, uh, I will talk about it later on. Okay. Then you can also modify the header of the packet, for example, if uh, you are uh, <coughs> in the IP, uh, IP router, uh, at least one modification is always done in the header of the packet, which is to decrement the time to leave. Each packet is in the header as a, a field, that is the time to leave. Each time a packet is uh, uh, processed by uh, a, a, a router, uh, the time to leave is decremented. When the time to leave reaches uh, zero, the packet is discarded. And this is a, a method to avoid circulation of, of packets in case of uh, routing loops. <clears throat> then you may collect uh, statistics, uh, do uh, packet fragmentation, which is another technique related to the IP layer. It's not the same as uh, the one that is performed by, by the traffic manager, because the traffic manager performs uh, segmentation and reassembly only for local resources. So to, for uh, <coughs> um, uh, a better um, working condition of the uh, network fabric. While in this case, packet, IP packet fragmentation is a function of the IP protocol. Okay. I don't go into the details because <coughs> it's not uh, necessary in this course. But <coughs> if you recall from uh, uh, the basic uh, <coughs> courses in uh, networking, you have also packet fragmentation. Uh, to implement all these functions, you need the memory. You need memory because, uh, uh, the, especially for the IP packet lookup and the packet classification operations, uh, you need memory to host tables uh, where the information is uh, stored, copied from the central IP uh, routing table in the local memory. And uh, we will see that according to the algorithm, that is used to perform uh, these two operations, you can have different types of memory. For example, you can have a static RAM, dynamic RAM, or content addressable memory, which is uh, the CAM. So the CAM. Uh, this is an example of a, a routing table that is uh, uh, stored in the local memory of the routing processor. And uh, this is a uh, um, memory um, uh, data structure uh, that is used to store the routing uh, table with certain algorithm, and uh, we will see it uh, more in details in the, later on in the course. And in this case, is a binary tree. <coughs> For packet classification, uh, the packet classification operation consists in classifying packets according to the fields of the headers. Uh, in uh, classifiers, you don't use only headers of the layer 3, so the IP the header, but you can use also other uh, fields, for example, of a header of layer 2 or header of layer 4. And uh, according to these multiple fields, packet classification is a similar is operation that is similar to IP address lookup, but uh, uh, using more fields. So in IP address lookup, you take only the destination, the IP uh, address of the destination, and you use it to access into a table like that, where you have only two columns. One is the prefix, and the other one is uh, the next door. With uh, packet classification, uh, the router takes uh, into account many fields, like, uh, for example, uh, IP address, not only destination, but also the source, the protocol identifier, port number, application, uh, layer two uh, fields, and so on. And according to, uh, then it performs a lookup into a, a table. So the basic operation is always a lookup. Uh, and, but in this table, when uh, a packet is matching a certain uh, uh, row, a certain entry, you don't find simply the uh, next stop address, like an IP address lookup, but you may find an action that can be drop the packet, send it to 
another uh, another router or uh, other things okay so this is basically the two functions that we will uh, analyze later the most important functions that are performed in the network processor the network processor is a critical uh, component of this uh, architecture. There are several ways to implement it. Uh, for example, the two main uh, uh, schemes are the configurable implementation <coughs> or the programmable implementation. Uh, the configurable implementation is like this. You have uh, uh, several blocks, each block is specialized in performing a specific function. For example, you have a classification block, packet analysis block, uh, switching fabric forwarding block, and uh, there is a manager that is coordinating these, and uh, uh, these chains of blocks are also replicated so that uh, you can manage uh, several packets at the same time. Uh, this is uh, effective because each block is very specialized, but uh, it requires uh, a hub that is uh, uh, specific, so it's uh, uh, completely uh, customized for this specific purpose. The alternative is to use a uh, um, general processor, usually uh, RISC architecture, and uh, so when uh, uh, you have to uh, process uh, inside the network processor when you have to process a packet. Uh, this uh, processor is uh, uh, used uh, several times uh, and all the other additional uh, components that you need, for example, the classification table and the manager and so on, <coughs> are accessed through an internal switching path. So in this case, you can use a general purpose processor that is easily programmable also uh, and, and uh, so in this case uh, the uh, network processor is implemented as a real processor you have uh, then a, a machine language a program that is executed here to uh, process each part Uh, so the network uh, processor is usually uh, implemented uh, um, in a, has to be uh, implemented in a very performant way. So it, you can use uh, ASICs, uh, so application specific integrated circuits, and there are companies that are <coughs> dedicated to uh, specialized in implementing this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, components. This is the scheme of a, a line interface uh, card. So you can see here that it's uh, very complicated. This is a, a logical block scheme at the implementation level. Um, and uh, you may recognize uh, blocks like, for example, the transponders there for managing physical layer the framer for the uh, layer 2 functions uh, and so on. And uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, a line card that is uh, actually <laughs> an experimental board. And finally we have uh, the switching fabric which is the last uh, uh, component of the architecture. Uh, we need uh, some uh, uh, device that is uh, able to support uh, uh, the transferring of multiple um, switches of multiple uh, packets at the same time so it has uh, several inputs and several outputs and uh, we already uh, cover the imp possible implementation at least in terms of generic architecture so you may have uh, the cross network architectures inside these uh, uh, circuit, so multi-stage implementation, or a, a cross-point switch, so the crossbar, if you want to implement it as a single stage. Large uh, uh, switching fabrics are usually implemented as a multi-stage uh, uh, architecture. 
<coughs> and uh, you know that then there is also the control component that can be distributed or centralized, uh, and is always another component of the switching fab. Uh, this is uh, the, um, uh, the scheme of uh, uh, the, the, the physical uh, uh, aspect of a large router. Uh, if the system is very large, so it's a top line router, it is usually, usually uh, hosting several racks because uh, one, uh, one container is not enough. Uh, these racks are interconnected by uh, usually optical fibers or very high speed uh, uh, patch cores that may be also implemented by copper, but usually are optical fibers. And um, uh, the racks uh, are organized into shelves. So you have uh, uh, different shelves inside the rack, and each shelf hosts a certain number of cards. So the cards are the vertical rectangles that you see here. Uh, this is the vertical uh, uh, mounting system. There is also the so called uh, pizza, hut, pizza implementation, pizza box implementation, where the Cards are horizontal. Um, each rack uh, has uh, uh, is not only a, a, a physical frame, but it also contains uh, <coughs> components uh, for cooling because uh, these systems uh, dissipate a lot of uh, power, so they you need always to <coughs> to have a, a cooling system. And uh, then the cards maybe. Uh, line cards or maybe uh, the other components of the system. Uh, usually uh, you have uh, uh, a, core, um, uh, a core rack where you have the main components like the management controller of the system, the clock distribution system, these are very important components. And uh, here you have also uh, the router con uh, root controllers, so the, the parts for processing. Um, then uh, um, uh, these parts are also usually uh, replicated several times for uh, um, guaranteeing a high availability. So if uh, the management controller goes out of service, all the system goes out of service. So usually you put the two management controllers, one is working and the other one is uh, for backup and in case of failure the backup uh, controller automatically starts uh, working. The same for the root controller and the same for the clock system. Uh, here you have also the switch public that is composed of uh, several cards in case of uh, multi-stage implementation. And uh, then there is also uh, there are some components for uh, uh, the control of all the equipment that is stored in a rack. First in a shelf, so the public shelf controller, and then in the whole rack. The rest of the cards are for the line cards. So you have uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, slots that are available to uh, plug in uh, different line cards. Um, and then uh, the number of the line cards depends on how many uh, ports you want to uh, use for that uh, specific router. So how many ports you have configured, and uh, the routers may have uh, up to hundreds of, uh, of line cards uh, according to the different uh, um, use that you make of that specific router. Okay. Yes? Mm. Uh, the yellow line, uh, what is this? This one? Okay. This is the switching fabric. Ah. All the lines of the, 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 the light yellow uh, boxes or cards uh, are for the composing the switching part. And the dark yellow cards are the uh, shelf uh, uh, controllers the, uh, monitoring uh, uh, all the components in the specific shelf. This kind of uh, uh, implementation uh, has uh, uh, very important advantage that is modular. Okay, so uh, when uh, you buy a top line router, uh, usually 
the, uh, uh, the um, service provider that is buying the, the equipment uh, is asking for a specific number of uh, input ports, uh, uh, so of, of uh, input and output ports. Um, so the dimension of the system is uh, uh, can be variable according to the needs of the uh, of the buyer, and also the, the price depends on how many input and output ports you buy. So by this uh, system of uh, pluggable interfaces. You have a modular system so that uh, you can add or, or uh, eliminate uh, ports just uh, taking out cards. So if the um, service provider wants a certain size, uh, then the, the vendor uh, will, will send, will ship him the number of racks that are uh, say enough to host. Uh, uh, the required number of input and output cards <coughs> and uh, the, the number of cards that have been bought. So if you want to add a card, uh, there is the possibility of adding uh, only certain new cards. Um, and otherwise, if you, if you want to change the dimension of the system, you just simply plug in or plug out uh, cards. This is true for the line cards, so for the input and output ports. It's also the same for the switching part. Switching architectures are very modular, in this case, are modular so that uh, you can add uh, parts if you want to expand the switching fabric or uh, remove parts if you want it uh, smaller. Uh, but you don't have to replace the whole thing. Okay, so you don't have to buy another uh, completely different system if you want to change uh, the size. And for example, uh, the Close architecture that we studied uh, is uh, of this type. Uh, we have seen that if you want, you can have it of three stage, three stages. Then, if you want to expand it, you can uh, uh, add other stages and uh, increase the size uh, without modifying the first three stages. This is uh, an architecture that can be implemented in this way. It is the picture of two systems, uh, real systems. They are out of date, but you can find in the internet uh, many other pictures of the same kind. Uh, even if they were old systems, you can see that uh, they have a uh, very they had a large capacity in terms of total throughput, 160 gigabyte uh, <coughs> seconds. Uh, and uh, also in terms of power consumption, several kilowatt of uh, power. Okay, then you have uh, other slides, but uh, you can uh, go through them uh, if you want, uh, just for uh, your personal reading interest. Uh, so this is uh, basically all about uh, uh, the router architectures. Uh, so remember this part because uh, I say the general router architecture is something that uh, I usually ask also in the oral exam, uh, referring to the system that we have uh, seen. So you should uh, know uh, this scheme and uh, the meaning of all the components of the scheme. Okay. <clears throat>